How's it going for you guys? Good. You can get in there. Where are you at in your process? Z? Yeah. Where where are you at in your process? I'm waiting for a few more people to sign in, but I was just curious. You said you're hanging in there. What's what's going on? Oh, um, uh, I'm I'm still kind of like studying the training uh, okay. videos. Okay. So and I've got the website up, and uh, pretty proud of that. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm still kind of studying though, to be honest. But, uh, yeah. Everything yeah. coming along though, pretty good. Okay. Okay. So, have you started like cold calling or anything like that? I haven't yet. I think that's probably going to be my biggest challenge uh, because it's like I don't feel comfortable because I don't really know the what do you call it? Uh, I guess the lingo a lot, and, I'm, and it seems like a lot of these owner operators have been in it for a while and stuff. So it's like, I'm just not comfortable yet, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I think that's probably going to be my hardest part, trying to call them and talk them in to let me dispatch for them. But uh, got to try it sooner or later, but just not ready just yet. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you just got to get um, just got to get comfortable with calling them, speaking to them, getting the um, getting that lingo down. Um, it, it's gonna come. It, it'll happen. It's not, you know, it's not overnight, but it'll happen. Um, who else is um at that point where they're not ready to call and deal with um, uh, the owner operators trying to get them under a dispatcher agreement? Uh, well, this is Kira. How you doing, Charles? Hey, hey, how are you? I wasn't comfortable, but what I did, I didn't, I didn't catch his name, but what I did was, um, because I'm going to start tomorrow, because it's, you know what I'm saying, it's the significant day for me, so, um, but what I did was I got on, I looked online and I found, you know, the, the weights of everything of the trucks that I wanted to start off with, because I'm just going to target certain things and just the things that I want to say to them, like, I just, I, I like the, the script that Charles gave, you know what I'm saying? But what I had to do was I, I took a notepad and I just, like, wrote it out my own verbiage because I, I will trip up when I go to the paper. So maybe you try right. writing it out in your own verbiage and looking up the sizes and the weights of the truck so you know what you're talking about and the tarp sizes and, and what goes where. And, I mean, that's what made me a little more comfortable. I'm a little more comfortable now, but I know I'm going to skip up a few times, but, I mean, practice make perfect. Yeah. yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. There, you go. there you go, and we can we can practice with more and more carriers, each equipment type. Um, for um, let me type this in. Real quick. So yeah, what what resources are you using to um, to reach out to the shippers? I mean, not the shippers, the uh, carriers. What resources are you using? Are we using the ones that we go over here, like Trucker's Path or um, Quick? I'm gonna bring them all up. Trucker's Path with um, the Safer website, and then. Uh, are you can you are you guys able to see my screen? Yeah. Okay. So Trucker's Path with the Safer website, Quick Transport Solutions, and I'm going to bring in um, the third one, that directory from Trucker's Edge. That. So that way we have three resources to look at carriers to kind of. Um, so to get to that directory, those who are enrolled subscription-based members will log into the DAT Trucker's Edge Low Board, go up to the orange section here in the upper left, and 
tools, that directory. And then when you get to this second tab that opens up, um, go to Research New Business Owners. Hello, uh, area code 510. I forget who that was. I spoke to you this morning, uh, I believe. Danielle Wright. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You signed up for the seminar in a couple of weeks, but I, I had mentioned to you to come on to the uh, training just to get some um, some feedback. So what we're doing now, are we're going over some of the methods in that we use in our training to call or reach out to dispatchers to try to get them to sign up for a, um, a dispatcher agreement. One of the methods is cold calling. And three resources that I have in my training um, come from different low board resources. This one here is um, that Trucker's Edge is on our website under Dispatcher 101 Low Boards. So I'm giving you a glimpse. If you can see my screen, are you on the phone or on a computer? I'm on the phone. I'm on the phone. Yeah, so if you were on the computer, I'm sharing my screen so everyone else can see it. Um, if you were able to log in on your computer, that would be helpful too. You can see more information. But anyway, at any rate, I can still talk a little bit about it. In our in our Dispatch 101 under Module 2, it's called Low Boards. Um, there is different options for low. We have videos in there that talk about the low boards, an explanation of what they are and what they do and their purpose. And then um, up to the actual low board by clicking the link. So I've already, I already have it open. I'm just showing you guys how to navigate to it. So I'm going to go back over to that directory and I've already called up the DAT directory right here. So when you get to the DAT directory from um, DAT Trekkers Edge, there are set, there's four tabs here, here. The first tab is by default search directory. That's the one you're going to use. The other three is um, you can use for other things, but the one that we really need for this purpose to find carriers is the um, search directory. Under search directory, I want to, the third option down, it says research new business partners. So you click that link, it opens up some more detailed information in which you can select the company type. We're looking for carriers. So if you were a broker, you would be looking for shippers, but we're looking for carriers because we are dispatchers we're trying to find carriers for. Um, Z was having this. Well, what major city are you near, Z? Uh, Atlanta. Okay, so I'm going to type in Atlanta and then put the state, Georgia, and then put the radius within, I would say, let's say 150 mile radius of Atlanta, Georgia. I'm going to leave the company name blank because I want to see all of the carriers who are within a 150 mile radius of Atlanta, Georgia, who are carriers. This is how you read that. And I'm going to sort them by the company names. So I'm going to hit search. And now it gave me more than 500 results. If you notice, these are the results here, all these options. You can see my screen. Over here, the reason why this is blank right now is because I haven't selected a specific company yet. When I do, let's just go to the top. When I do, let's select, uh, let's say, 48 hours transport. They're in South Carolina, which is a Greenville, which is within a 150-mile radius of Atlanta. So if I select 48 hours transportation, now data information will populate about that specific company over here. So now you can gather more information. You can see uh, they are an interstate. They have one power unit, one truck, and one trailer. One driver, I should say. I'm sorry. The commodities, what the commodity means is what is actually being hauled in the trailer. So they haul general freight and paper products, which leads me to believe of the three major equipment types, that's probably a dry van, not a flatbed, not a reefer, so probably a dry van. But it'll, it'll say it under the equipment section, if there is an equipment section right here. 
usually there's an equipment section in there for them. So over here, their equipment type, they have two 53-foot vans driving. So that tells you right there. And there's more information if you want to um, read about it here. So they, they can be a possible candidate. So this is one of the three options that we use. The second one is Quick Transport Solutions. That's another one. So Quick Transport Solutions is to use this, and I'll put a copy of this into the chat. So everybody can have it. So Quick Transport Solutions, the way to use this to find um, carriers is under resources. The second to the last option at the top, along the top of the screen here, resources. So now you click resources. Now you want to search for trucking companies. So now in here you got a, a um, your your filtering criteria. You want to search by you can search by state and city, by zip code, by US DLT, or by MC number. Well, we're looking for new carriers or carriers in general, so we don't know their MC or DLT number, so we won't search by that. We don't know the zip codes unless you got a specific city, but we do know city and state. So you said Atlanta, Georgia, so we're going to say Georgia. The city is Atlanta, and then number of trucks. We'll say one to five since we're just starting out. Number of tractors, one to five. Operations, we're going to say interstate. We want someone who can go in and out of the state or, or different states throughout the um, throughout the country. So, and then once we get that, and then we'll hit search. So now we come across page one, and you got 589 results. So you got here, and then this is just some advertisement. You, this can go away, but we have all these companies here that we can look at and select it from here. You can even get more detailed information. So we choose one. Let's choose ANS Express Transport LLC. It's their address, their, their MC number, DLT number, one truck, one driver, and you open it up about them. It gives more detailed information about that. So that's the second option. And here's what they haul. Cargo hauled by ANS Express Transport, produce, chemicals, general freight. So they may be a refrigerated, a reefer or a, and or dry van. So they may have a reefer unit, a reefer trailer, and then cut the trailer unit off the TCU and use it as a dry van. That could possibly be the case. And sometimes they do intermodal, so they might do power only too. They'll drop their trailer and just do intermodal, pick up um, chassis from the ports and haul containers because it says intermodal. That's what that is. So, so that's the second option. You got quick transport solution as an option. If you are using one of this is one of the major methods that we use to go to find carriers is cold calling. The first method is if you have truck stops that are within 20 to 30 mile radius of where you physically live, you can pretty much visit those truck stops and talk to the carriers directly. Um, pass out your company cards, flyers, what have you, post them in the buildings where, you know, where they get food and stuff like that. As long as you get the clearance from the management team over there, you just don't want to um, disrespect that facility. So that's option number one, where you physically talk to someone, they see you in person, you guys are already making eye contact, verbiage, body language, things like that. The second way is cold calling. One, and this one of the three resources that we use under the cold calling category is, number one was the DAT directory, number two was the quick transport solution, and then number three, another low board that's within this training is called Trucker Path. And we use the truck search feature of Trucker Path. I use Trucker Path and Safer together because I want to vet out the MCs of the carriers to make sure that they're not part of a brokerage, so we won't be double brokering. So with this third cold calling feature, Trucker Path, we got Quick Transport Solutions, we got that directory. So with Trucker Path, let me log in, and this is included with the subscription-based membership of. Um, Dispatcher 101. 
So when you first log into Trucker Path, you come to this screen here. We will click at the top truck search. So here, when you click truck search, you will come across a search criteria filtering um, screen here. And it's going to show you who, how many are currently logged in at this point. Once it's done thinking here, it says 81 right now, but it should be more. Well, it's the weekend, it's Sunday, so you never know how many people are logged in, how many carriers are logged in just looking or making themselves available. On the weekend, it's kind of, it's kind of less traffic than it is during the week. So at any rate, while this is still thinking, so it's 89 right now that are logged in. So um, what I do is I, under pickup, I leave all states selected. Now, if you've got a specific state that you want to just target, then that's cool. You just select that specific state. But if you want to increase your chances of finding more results for carriers, then I leave all states. Equipment type. Um, yeah, there are, you can say, you can do this, you can do Google. Um, so you're in Atlanta, Georgia. Let me answer your question real quick that you just asked. Um, Z just asked, is there a website we can go to to find truck stops in your area? Yeah, you certainly can. You can Google, let's say, you can say truck stops near Atlanta, or you can say near me and it'll, it'll do your particular location, but since you are near Atlanta, Georgia, here you go. Truck stops near Atlanta, and then you click more places, and it opens it up. So you got all these for you. If you can see my screen, Z, all these truck stops. You got Loves, you got Petros, Sicko, gas stations. You got all these truck stops here. So these are the ones near you: Petros, Pilots, um, truck parking, Petro in Atlanta, Sicko, Quick TA, Pilot. Loves this flying J's. Look, flying J. Here we go. Before I even said it, there it was. Flying J right there. So this is your Atlanta and the metropolitan area where you are, and that should be within a certain radius. So all you have to do is just type in Google truck stops near Atlanta, Georgia, and anyone can do it for them. So someone else give me a city and state that they live near, and we can do another one. But did you uh, did you see that you see that Z? Yeah, thank you. I yeah, appreciate thank that. You. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm trying to see. So I'll do one near me. Let's see. Uh, we'll say Norfolk, major city near me. Truck stops near. Oh, uh, Greens Greensboro. Greens. Uh, Danielle typed in Greensboro. So Greensboro, South Carolina. Is that Greensboro, North Carolina? Uh, let's see what she said. North Carolina. Okay, Greensboro, North Carolina. So. So we're going to type in Greensboro, North Carolina. It should be some all on 85 and, um, yeah, so 85. So here we go. You got plenty of them down there, too. So you got a ton of them. You got Quarles. You got Pilots, Petros, um, Browns, Loves. I'm sure there's some Flying J's around there, TAs. So there you go. You got them on 85, on 40, near Dur uh, Raleigh, Durham, um, all over the area. So Ashboro. So you're familiar with all these interstates because you're from that area, so you can and, and strike a conversation with. The second one is the cold calling. Um, and then within the cold calling, we're dealing with um, three resources. We have, again, the DAT directory, um, quick transport, and the quick transport solutions, and the um, truck search feature on Truckers Pass. So I was going over the truck search feature before um, Z asked that question. Um, Hey, um, Emmanuel, if I can pronounce that correctly. Hello, welcome. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly, Emmanuel. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. I do not want to get someone's name um, 
incorrect. Uh, so the third one of the three, Trucker's Path, the, search, the tr truck search feature. So again, I was filtering out. So the three major equipment types, which, what are the three major equipment types that we try to focus on as beginner dispatchers that will make our job a little bit easier? What are those? Okay. Correct. So I'm going to click any to deselect everything and just select those three starting out in, in the equipment type option. Under the safety rating option, why do you think I only select satisfactory as a safety rating as opposed to conditional and unsatisfactory? The reason is, is because we don't want to call brokers with carriers that we have under a dispatcher agreement. Right. Kira, Kira said the better, you have a better chance of getting the load because if I was a broker, I would be reluctant to consider you, consider setting up your driver under my brokerage that has a conditional or an unsatisfactory safety rating. That means that's a red flag. Something in that safety rating is wrong, either the insurance, accidents, CSA scores, whatever the case may be. So as a broker, I'm trying to protect my best interest of my customer who's the shipper. So I need carriers who has just all satisfactory ratings. In other words, um, every, and I'll show you what the ratings, what are the categories within that makes up a safety rating. So when I hit search, This number is going to decrease because I've drilled down and made specific choices, right? It was 89. It's going to get smaller because, because of that. So now it's 55. So this person's a drive in. He logged in a minute ago, posted in a minute ago, uh, Mark Light, Light Wine, Light Wine Trucking. So remember I say in the safety ratings, so if you open up Mike's or Mark's just – now, the safety rating has five sub-features in it, their authority, the operation of the vehicle, safety of the vehicle, insurance, and others. So if any of those things are not green, then it's going to be either conditional or unsatisfactory. So you can click on it just to get in more detail. They have an acceptable authority. They have an acceptable operating. They're operating um, they haven't been out of service. They're operating interstate. They have an acceptable safety rating. Well, in this case, theirs hasn't been rated yet. They haven't driven long enough. They've only driven so many miles. So, But here's their hours of service, their you know, compliance with all that stuff. So you can actually drill down and get more detail of what makes up the safety rating and why. They have an acceptable insurance. They have the required $750,000, but they filed for a million. So the minimum requirement, you will hear liability. Most brokers say we want at least a million, but the FMC... ESA only requires 750,000 BIPD insurance um, for liability. But most brokers say well, we need a million. That's why you see a lot of carriers have a million dollars liability on their um, insurance coverage. They are exceeding the minimum requirement of FMCSA and they're meeting the criteria of the broker so they can book those loads. That's why you see that. So, and then other, you have other reasons. Um, but that makes up the safety rating. So, when I get a result set from my search criteria in um, Trucker's Path, well, before I move on, does anyone have questions about what I've said so far? <clears throat> All right. So now, if you notice, in each case, I'm going to refresh this to see who logged in recently. It may still be marked light wine at the top. Okay, here's another one. Daryl Milton, he's a reefer. He two minutes ago he logged in and Illinois. So so when I open up a specific carry, I get more details. I take either the MC or DLT and copy that. And this is where I use that safer company snapshot feature to, um, 
to look up more information about that specific carrier to see if their entity type, which is right here, just says carrier, and it does. So here's the, so he's a good candidate to possibly call. We can give him a call and do a live call so you guys can actually hear some of the lingo and kind of catch on to what, what's said. Uh, he's in Illinois. He's central time, so it's 1025 over there, so he may be up at this point. But let's see. It seems like he's a new carrier. He drove seventy thousand last year, and he got his. He did his renewals MCS one hundred and fifty on uh, in June. So let's see um, if he is um, available to talk. Daryl Milton. And, you, and you're going in this blind, so you don't know what to expect. So I'm calling him on speaker. Hello. Hello. Can I speak to Daryl Milton, please? Hello? Hello? Hey, can I speak to Daryl, please? Yes. Hey, Daryl, this is Charles with uh, Exodus Dispatching Service. I'm trying to see if you, um, are you under load or looking for a load? So I lost him. So I move on to the next one. Mark Lightwine. So you have to have thick skin. So you either I either lost him or he hung up on me. So in either case, let me I'll copy. I'll move on to the next one. Copy. Paste and look up Mark. He's in what is that, Nebraska? Call Mark. Geneva, Nebraska. It may be Central Time and it may be Mountain Time. It's hard to tell. Nebraska. Uh, so he's he's like right here. So. I'm not going to leave him a voicemail. He may call back. Um, let's see. I'll leave my ringer on loud so I'll hear it. Our carriers logging into truck load to find loads or show that they are available for dispatch to call. They are they're not available for dispatch to call them, but available for brokers to call them. So they're making themselves, they're making their, and, and the answer to the question is both. They're logged in to, to look for loads on truck, on a um, truck, truckers path and they're um, looking to make themselves available for calls by um, brokers because brokers use truck path as well. We log into truck path to see the, the fact that they're as dispatchers to see the fact that they are logged in and we solicit our service to them. Okay. Well, we basically, 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 So we cut out the middleman and call them ourselves. Well, not necessarily because you're going to be dealing with the middleman. You are just working for, as a dispatcher, you're working for, you're helping the carrier. You're solving a problem for the carrier by helping them maintaining loads for them because a lot of times so most carriers or a lot of carriers need assistance finding loads because they're busy driving. So finding their next load. They're going to be at a truck stop waiting, maybe sitting for days. So if you can streamline that process 
by being in the back office and doing the administrative work while they're driving and currently under their current load, you're looking for their next load for them. So by the time that they become empty or offload or deliver that load that they're currently under, their next load is waiting for them some, some 50, 75, 100 miles away. And you do that over and over again to the point where you get it down to a science and um, have dedicated lanes for your carriers. That's, that's what you have to build up to that point. So you're not cutting the middleman, the broker, because you're going to be dealing with brokers all the time. Because um, those are the ones you're getting the loads from, you're booking the loads from. Uh, it's rare that you deal directly with shippers because shippers mainly either deal directly with the carriers or the brokers. Now, if you deal with shippers who deal directly with carriers, then you will, you're going to word um, your conversation with that shipper a little bit different. You're going to be, you're not going to say you're a dispatcher for that truck. Uh, that truck, you're going to say you you are uh, managing, you like managing the loads for the for the company, the trucking company. So if the shipper deals directly with carriers, they're going to say, okay, well send over, send over your information. What they mean is send over your your MC, your insurance, your W9, and then the shippers are going to send directly to you the load tenders that they normally would send to the um, brokers. Now that is cutting the middleman out. If you can get a carrier and you get a shipper to, to, to deal directly with the carrier, then the load tenders that you receive from the shippers cuts the broker out because that, that way the broker can't take any of the revenue off the top and then resell that load to the carrier because the broker is not being used in that particular situation. Did that answer your question? Okay. And so now, if we were to get someone on the phone, we would ask them, you know, um, are you under a load or looking for a load for your drive-in, for your flatbed, for your reefer, whatever equipment type that you see for that specific um, carrier that you're calling for at that point in time? You would ask them about that. And also, we also there's another resource too for carriers. Um, it's on the um, and these are for new carriers who just got their MC authority, so they're more um, willing to allow dispatchers to assist them with uh, finding loads. So here's another one, Kevin Wisegiver. He's driving KW Logistics. Uh, he's in Ohio, and let's look him up. DLT. Okay, and he's four and three. So you can decide if you want to, if you are able to handle a trucking company with more than one asset or more than one truck and trailer, or if you just want to start with a one man team, one truck and trailer, and then build your. As a new dispatcher, I recommend starting small and then growing and slowly scaling your um, dispatching business as you become more familiar with the process because that's the key, learning the process. Once you get the process down, then you can plug any carrier and any broker into that system, that process system, and you can book loads. So, so start with one, two, maybe three, you know, and then, and then grow from there. So um, let's see, 419, 466. So, Any questions so far on that? No questions? Now let me, I'm going to call um, one of my carriers maybe several of my carriers I haven't spoken to in a while. That way I can get an idea of what's going on out there from their perspective. Let me call Smooth first, see what's going on with him, and then I'll call. And he's a reefer. I'm, I may call one of each. I may call a, a dry bed, a flat bed, and a reefer carrier so you guys can hear what's going on out there and some of the lingo that you will be hearing um, from time to time. So let's see. Someone else just came in. 
Manuel. Manuel. Oh, hey, Manuel. How you doing? Long time to hear from, bro. What's going on? What's up? What's up, man? How you doing, Smooth? Yeah. All right, man. I'm, I'm sitting back having a little drinky drink. I'm <laughs> home. That's good. Oh, no, I'm just in training. I just wanted some of the students to hear uh, a, a real live carrier and get a perspective of what's going on out here in these streets. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, what's up? Um, well, everybody, this is uh, this is Smooth. He's uh, a reefer carrier, and um, he can give you a perspective. Well, what have, what have you noticed recently, uh, Smooth, about um, – like as far as the rates or what's going on out here with the lanes, as far from a reefer from a reefer's perspective, because you're a reefer carrier, right? So I mean, like honestly, the uh, the brokers, they're like gobbling up all all the uh, all the funds. You know what I mean? Since the COVID nineteen hit, it hasn't been too good as of now. But once you know things picked up, once I pick up, once they come up with a cure or whatever the case may be, it may be a little bit better. But right now it's horrible. Yeah, it's really horrible. Mm -hmm. Like I want under I want under um, Amazon because Amazon is like the new JB Hunt of the uh, transportation business right now. So I've been I've been running with them and I've been scoring like maybe uh forty two hundred to five thousand uh per week and that's that's you know, the the, the minimum is about seven. So you mm -hmm. know, it is what it is. Yeah. So we, we we just gonna have to tough it out. So, you know, um yeah, that's pretty much what it is. Yeah, so you you eating, you ain't you just ain't you just ain't at Gold Corral right now. You just at a fast food spot. You're not eating big. You just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not at the all all you can eat buffet right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not the good, you know, all you can eat, y'all. But you know, and I'm, I'm on my McDonald's shit right now. Because usually, what we used to do about sixty five hundred per week, the sixty five seven a week. I mean, yeah, stuff like that. Those yeah. times are going right now. Right. So also, to let me ask another question, so they can hear it too. If a person was to dispatch for you, what are what are? Could always ask you this: What are some of the qualities that you would look for if you were to have a dispatcher for you? What were some of the qualities you look for as a carrier? I mean, consistency. Um, get get loads that you know like I can uh, obtain because I can go on the low boards and pull loads off myself. Right. You know. So if they got a, a, a it, 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 here's what it is. It's it's a thing to. Um, get loads that you know the driver can't get. So this way, he's more likely to deal with you because he can't get access to them loads. Now, if you go on one, two, three, if you go on uh, what's some of the load boards out there? That you know, that like, not the, yeah, yeah that one, two, three yeah. internet truck stop yeah right. So I mean, I can do that myself. Right. You know what I mean? And don't have to pay a dispatch. Right. But if they have access, like if they if they have a uh, a word of mouth and know how to, you know, it's all about manipulation. You got to manipulate the system and get, get, put yourself in a position to where as though uh, it profits you. You understand what I'm saying? So if you're going on a deck and the low boards and all that, and they're, they're giving horrible rates right now, you know, but, but if you, you know, can talk your way into maybe a uh, shipper or something like that and can, I uh, can, uh, you know, get, get trucks in there and get trucks out of there, then you're in a way better position. Because guys are trying to make more money out of here. Like, guys are starving. Right. You know? It, I mean, these guys are giving up, are giving up $400 for it for, to go, you know, I might end up with like a $1.80, a $1.65 off the shit. Like, I usually run for like three twenty-five, four to $5 per mile. Right. You know what I mean? So, if a broker comes come to me, um, not a broker, if a dispatch comes to me and offers me, hey man, and and you know the talk game, everybody make it sound real excited. Hey man, I can give you one twenty five per mile. <laughs> like, please, are you serious? <laughs> you know, and I usually never call them again. Right. You know what I mean? Just for that, because you can't, you can't. I mean, if I can do your job, my 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 main thing is hiring a person is get them to do things that I can't do. Right. If and I can do your job, then what do I need you for? There you go. And I hope yeah. everybody heard. Yeah, I hope the dispatchers who are who are forming their business hears that. And this is a real carrier saying this. So, yeah. You know what I mean? And that's just that.
Hey, you were you were from uh, uh London? I thought she uh she fell back. She started doing some other stuff. Yeah, she's doing uh four X and I got a call. I'm a matter of fact, I'm gonna call her next. But uh, I keep in contact with her every now and then on the on Messenger on Facebook. So yeah, yeah, she she definitely um yeah I I. I I uh, contact her every now and again, but the rates been so bad. You know, she was she was like one of your top guys. Yeah, she was she was doing it. Yeah, she was a gun. Now she fell back. Do you want to know why? Because there's no more. There's not enough uh, finances to go around, so she kind of fell back from the uh, industry. Yeah, I think she was doing power only for a minute, and then she. Um then she started doing, she's doing Forex currency exchange. She's doing a lot of stuff. She's mixing it up. But yeah. uh, she had reached out to me because she wanted to get back in and start, you know, uh, moving some, because I got to get in contact with some of my older carriers who I deal, I work with, but I haven't moved loads for, and then, you know, start doing it then. Does yeah. anyone, can I, can I, can someone, um, can someone ask you a question? You got, you got, I don't want, I didn't, I didn't want to interrupt you. I don't know if you got time to answer a, a couple of questions or not. I'm home. I got to uh, do my, I got to go back and do my, register. Uh, I got to go get back registered tomorrow. So like right now, I'm, I'm like chilling, I'm vaping, I'm drinking and watching TV. <laughs> it's all good. Five <laughs> questions away. Okay. So uh, I got Smooth on here. He's a reefer, 53 foot reefer carrier. Does anyone have a question from a, a dispatcher question or a question in general for, for this carrier? Right here, smooth, and uh, you can either unmute yourself or type it into the chat, and I'll I'll um I'll mention it. So Z said, "This is helpful. Thanks, Charles. You're welcome." Okay, ask smooth. Can I dispatch for him? <laughs> he tried to steal my joke. I put you I put you on the block, and he tried to take my customers. <laughs> I'm um I'm like running. I'm running under Amazon like down, like I said before. Amazon is a new JP Hunt. These guys are blowing up fast. So if you're, if you, I don't want to be offensive, but you, if you have any type of intelligence, it'll be to go to, to Amazon because they're running the show right now. They even, I even see JP Hunt trucks picking up Amazon loads. Like, wow. are you serious? So they're trying to be like Microsoft. They're trying to monopolize the industry right now. They're, that's what they're doing. That's why the industry is so messed up. So they're like, well, if you want to make any money, you got to come with us. Right. Because they're, they're controlling things right now. I don't know how, whatever dude's name is, Jeff. Jeff, Be yeah, whatever. Jeff Bezos. Yeah, Jeff Bezos. Yeah. yeah. That dude is a monopoly king. I wish I had his intelligence to monopolize like that. So, so Kira, Kira just asked. She said, "What questions?" Now she's asking this to you, Smooth. What questions would you ask a dispatcher attempting to gain your business? What questions would I have for them? Yeah. Um, so, if a dispatcher called you and was trying to get your business, what questions would you have for them? Like, how much money can you make for us? Right. Like, you know what I mean? If you'd be like, well, this is, like, some dispatchers are kind of fan the way because their, their interest rates are the way, I mean, their rates are the way too high. But if you keep it mod, uh, moderate and you can get that truck to run, you know what I mean? If you got to connect to run that truck and y'all both can make money, then everybody's happy. A driver's not going to complain about that. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, you remember what we used to it's say all about money. Yeah, yeah all everybody, about money. everybody eats me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all about the finances. If you can't dispatch a truck and make that guy money, nine times out of ten, he probably deal with you. But I guarantee you, it won't be for long. Right. Like he's going to bounce. He's going to go with the next dispatch. Because honestly, I, me myself, a lot of guys like doing it, but I don't like looking for loads. It takes too much time. Right. I mean, I like to have my loads already set up. I mean, I like to have the loads set up throughout the week. Right. You know what I mean? I like to have all set up. Right. And that's what the want they had going with you. You'll be under a load by the time you deliver that one. Your next load will be ready for like a week yeah, or two. Yeah, yeah. She had me. She had me running a California joint. It could be damn near five going in and seven coming back. So, so that's we talking twelve thousand dollars right there. Twelve thousand for yeah for a week, week and a half. Yeah. But you know, certain people say, "Nah, you're not taking that load. This is the third, and you know, I didn't take the load, yeah. which I should have took the load, no matter what. 
you know, but it is what it is. Yeah. So Z just asked what angle to approach Amazon, I guess from a dispatcher's perspective. Are you saying that to start a truck business? I'm not seeing the dispatcher angle with Amazon. Either you may have a connection that works in Amazon and you say, like if I'm a dispatcher and I know someone who works at a fulfillment center or a logistics person at Amazon, as a dispatcher, I can approach them and say, look, I got several trucks that I dispatch for. How can we get in good with you guys? So you, if you do power only, and um, if their record is pretty decent, they can they can get in. Right. So so they do so they do load loadouts and tow aways. Uh, they basically do drop and hook. I don't know about loadouts. Okay. And tow away. Okay, drop and hook. They do drop and hook. That's all. That's all I do. I go get a little trailer, drop that one, pick it empty up, run it to where I need to run it to. Drop that on, drop that off. It may be another, um, it may be another empty that I have to transport or load it. You know what I mean? Right. But the best thing now, if anybody want to make any money, the best thing to do is go to Amazon. Right. But you got your own MC, right? I am working on getting my own MC under my dispatching or, or a different angle, but at the moment I do not. All right. Well, once you get your own MC, like right now, I'm running from. Uh, I go to upstate New York down to. I haven't hit South Carolina, North Carolina in a while. I stop at Beach, Virginia, and by the time I'm done, I got about three thousand miles. Yeah. So when you come to, you got to give me a call when you get to Virginia if you're in the area, like the southeastern part of it, like North of Virginia Beach, Suffolk. Yeah, I mean I'm down there a lot. They wanted, I, I just came home yesterday. Was it yesterday? I don't know. The liquor ran through my system. So I can't remember. <laughs> I came home either yesterday or the day before that. And um, uh, they wanted me to run the load. Hey, man, listen, we got a uh, hot load. I said, listen, I've been out here for 30 days already. I'm not doing no hot But yeah, but it's a hot load. I don't care. Right. I don't care if it's a hot load. Like, I'm going home. They got plenty of free. Now, with the... With the dropping with the dropping hooks, do you need like trailer interchange on your insurance? Yeah, yeah. All all the basic stuff. You know, they're not gonna deviate from that. Yeah. You know, and oh and you need a two million dollar policy. Yeah, I knew they went up. I knew it. I knew it. Yeah. They they you need a two million so you're paying about twenty six hundred dollars a month just for the insurance. So therefore you gotta make ends meet and have that truck pump it. Right. It gotta it gotta be pumping. Right. Other than that, it is not going to work in a driver, and you is going to end up behind. He's going to end up in the negative. So if he's not willing to stay out and make ends meet, then this guy was making about ten thousand uh, dollars. They're grossing. I ain't gonna say net. They're grossing in about ten grand every week. Right. You know what I mean? About and you're not going for you only run up and down the East Coast. So I spend about, I say. Maximum about six hundred and fifty, maybe seven hundred dollars on fuel per week. Yeah, that's what I was, that's what I was going to ask you. Like, you got line item expenses, you got fuel is the big one, insurance, you know, yeah. things like that. Yeah. So I spend that on seven hundred dollars on fuel a week, but I'm turning over, you know, way more than that. So it's it's well worth it. I'm ready to start hitting them for more bread. Like, listen, bro, this is I need to bring in about six grand a week. else have a question for smooth i don't want to interrupt his leisure time is a uh, relaxed time vaping and uh other things <laughs> vaping, vaping is taking this is my um you know my second you know i ain't a big drinker but when i come home i like to relax it's like my second beverage of the year you know i'm gonna make it a third though when i come home again because that shit is stressful yeah on on a little on a saturday uh on the fourth of july my mom had a passed so i didn't know if you knew that oh man i didn't know that you yeah. didn't even yeah I yeah had no idea i didn't know that yeah, yeah. So she has. I'm sorry to, I'm yeah. sorry to hear about that, bro. Yeah, that COVID, COVID, uh, congestive heart failure. She had a heart attack, but she had in a nursing home. She got the um, COVID nineteen over there, and then it just 
that was just the icing, that was the icing on the cake. So, um, yeah. How's the niece doing? Well, I got, I got, a, I got. Yeah, well, you know, uh, uh, one way off the line, I gotta talk to you about that. Okay, gotcha. You see what I'm saying? So when you get time, you give me a buzz. Gotcha. Well, you know what I'm saying. All right. So, All any, right. anyone else? Any more questions for Smooth before I call my next carrier? All right, smooth. I appreciate it, man. I'll, I'll call you later right, on today. Man, stay up, man. Give me a buzz, man. I got some. I got some drunk. Uh, some diamonds to drop on you. Okay, got you. All right. All right. All right. Please. All right. All right. Any feedback about what smooth was saying, guys, from the truckers' perspective? Before I call the next one, if I can get a hold of them. You said Amazon is trying to monopolize the industry, um, so if we can get if we can get connections with Amazon, connect the trucks that we get under a dispatcher agreement to the Amazon relay, um, and all they're doing is dropping a hook, and they're not even using their trailers. They're just using their tractors. So they, they're just dropping and hooking the Amazon trailers all up and down the East Coast, and they're making, he said he's making about 4500 to 5000 a week, so that's, what is that? If you do the math, um, and he says he's, no, he's going no more than 700, 700 miles, so four or five thousand a week so he's, he's not doing that um uh forty five hundred to seven so we'll say forty seven hundred we'll meet halfway forty five to five thousand a week times four weeks in a month eighteen eight a month times twelve months in a year twelve months in a year um so two hundred twenty five thousand six hundred gross Okay, I'm sorry. The live went out. I lost internet there for a second because I was talking. Okay, I still see it here. Okay, so we're explaining a dispatcher angle. Can you read? So, yeah, the dispatcher angle, if you can get in with somebody uh, like at Amazon, talk to somebody there who has access to the to the dropping hooks. Matter of fact, I was just talking to someone in my area about that. Let me see if I can reconnect with that person about getting – carriers, a, a number of carriers, because he said they just work with MC and DOT numbers. So you can have as many, you can have a trucking company with MC and DOT numbers or one owner operator with MC and DOT numbers, send them over to Amazon. They're trying to monopolize it. And right now Amazon is winning. So that could be an angle. He said the rates are not as good as they are. He said the brokers are eating more than the carriers. So these are some realistic concepts and ideas to keep in mind when you do um, begin to dispatch for the uh, the carriers. So any feedback about that conversation? And let's see who else. I thought I had Joanne's number here and Patrick's. Any general dispatching questions? So this is the first part, getting the carrier under a dispatcher agreement, right? So the question is, well, what is a dispatcher agreement and what is a profile? For those of you who are, like, very new, beginner level, the dispatcher agreement, if we go to that under forms and documents, we'll do a little reiteration there. Um, This is the agreement that you set up. And this is just a template. If you are in this particular training portal, this is just a template to redesign for your business. You can put your logo here and then all the verbiage there and then retweak it for your particular um, dispatching business. So now there is a great area, according to the FMCSA, as far as a bona fide agent being an independent dispatcher because bona fide agents for the carriers actually work for that carrier company, like under them as dispatchers. Well, that's what you're going to be doing. And it's, a, it's supposed to be a bona fide agent is someone who works on a day-to-day -day basis for the carrier. Well, if you are an independent dispatching company and you're finding loads for your carriers on a day-to-day -day basis, then you qualify um, as a bona fide agent. Now, there's another argument, um, according to the FMCSA, um, 
CFR uh, Title 49, 371.2 that talks about um, dispatching for more than one company as a bona fide agent. But that's possible. You can do that as well. So these are until until the FMCSA changes that and gets more specific about it, dispatching for more than one carrier with different authorities is is fine as a bona fide agent because you are working um, on a day-to-day -day basis for that specific one, whether it's one, two, three, four, five. Now I advise between three and five starting out, you can pretty much maintain a, a small living with that. You can make anywhere between 86,000 to 125,000 gross a year with just five carriers, depending on how many loads you find for them um, per week. And also depending on what your rate that you charge percentage or flat rate to the, um, the carrier for your service. So this match agreement and the profile. The carrier preference form or carrier profile, however you want to work with it, is just the carrier's way of telling you how they want to run, how much weight they want to haul, what their equipment type is, how much money they need to move the truck, whether they're, you know, they're cents per mile, whether it's $2 a mile for a drive-in, $2.50 a mile for a flatbed, or $2.75 a mile for a reefer, whatever those numbers are. <laughs> and then um, also getting the carrier involved getting some other documents. In addition to the documents that the carrier returns um, when they send back the dispatch agreement and profile is because we need those documents to um, to book loads for in a timely fashion with the brokers because the brokers always ask for these documents when they are setting up the carriers. So Danielle just asks, so when we get a carrier, we send them all these documents? No, no. When you get a carrier, you are, to get a carrier, you are sending them two documents, two documents, the dispatcher agreement and the profile. And you're, it'll be your business, like your business logo here, you're sending them this document, which is the dispatch agreement, which is an agreement between you and the carrier. The carrier saying, hey, yeah, I'll, I'll hire you as my dispatcher. I'll pay you either a flat rate or a percentage to find me loads and keep me, you know, keep me rolling, things like that. And then the profile sheet, the second sheet, is the carrier's way, filling this out, them telling you how they want to run. They only want to go to this state. They don't want to go to New York because of the tolls. They don't want to go in the mountains because of wear and tear. So the two documents you send to them, when they send those two documents back filled out, the dispatcher agreement and the profile, they are going to send back, because you're going to ask them in an email, they are going to send back these documents to you along with those two that you sent them. So you're not sending them because they already have since they are owner operators, they already have an MC authority, they already have a W-9, they already have a certificate of insurance, and if they have a factory company, they already have an NOA because they are owner operators. Before they even met you, they were booking loads and running loads, so they need these forms to legally operate. But the reason why you, as a dispatcher, since you got this carrier, the reason why you are asking them to send you copies of this because you need this in your internal system, your internal filing system for that specific carrier, which you just got under a dispatch agreement. Because when you go to a broker and a broker sends you a carrier packet to fill out to get set up with that broker, they are going to ask for proof that your carrier is who they say they are. That they have the MC authority, which says that they have the authority by the DOT and FMCSA to run freight either intrastate or interstate. That's the purpose of an MC authority, that they have a W-9 and that they have a tax ID number, that they have certificate of insurance stating that they have the minimum requirements for cargo and liability, cargo being 100000 liability being, um, or now, $2 million, because Smooth is said. And if your carrier that you get under a dispatcher agreement has a factory company to help pay, you know, for those, um, to help pay the carrier when they deliver the loads as opposed to the broker paying, then they will send you a copy of their NOA form, the notice of assignment. 
The purpose of the notice of assignment is to run credit checks on the brokers to make sure that they pay on time, that there are no red flags um, against that brokerage. So you, you follow that? So those, all those, so all those other documents, we don't have these. The carrier already has these because they're already in the carrier's possession because they wouldn't be carriers without these documents, especially these three right here, MC authority. You have to have an authority to run to haul freight as an owner operator. You have to be a, either a common carrier, contract carrier, passenger carrier, or a um, household goods, HHG. You have to have an MC number, a unique MC number, or a unique DLT number. That's what this does. I'll open it up. That's what this this MC number, DLT number. So it's assigned through the, DO, the U.S. DOT, Department of Transportation, in conjunction with the FMCSA, Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration. Each carrier out here on these roads now, owner-operators, has one of these certificates of um, MC authority certificates, and each carrier has a unique MC number and a unique DOT number that's associated with their trucking company. So that's that. The W-9, each carrier has a unique identifying number, employee EIN number associated with their business, which goes here. Their personal name goes here with that's on their IRS form, income tax form. Their DBA name goes in line two. ABC trucking, whatever that is, and then their entity, entity type, their legal structure, whether it's LLC, S Corp, C Corp, what have you, goes in area three. Uh, five and six is for the street address, city, state, and zip, and then down here, each carrier has a unique EIN number as opposed to a social security number. You don't want to associate your personal social security number with your business name. You want to assign your EIN number with your business name as a business owner. It just makes business sense to do it that way. And then um, the certificate of insurance, each carrier has whoever they are insured with, they have a certificate of insurance with their policy number in this area when it's starts and when it expires here and the type of policy, whether it's a general liability for a million or two million, the amount, or if it's cargo for a hundred thousand. So each carrier has that. They are required to carry insurance. They cannot haul freight on their trailers without having that freight insured. The cargo up to a hundred thousand and have general liability of a million or two million in case they get into an accident and other people are involved. So any questions about that? All right. So now after you go through getting a carrier under a dispatch agreement and profile, you get back all your documents you need, you file them internally with your business, and like say you do electronic file folders for each um, customer or each carrier. So I'll give you my structure here. I got under Exodus, I got my 7% carrier agreements, my 10% carrier agreements. So I'll go to school, which we, who we just got off the phone with. So under 7%, I got subcategories, subfolders. So he was a reefer carrier, so I got all my reefer carriers. Here is Smooth, Hakeem is his name, right there. So these are all my carriers that I got under a dispatch agreement who are reefer carriers, under the reefer sub. 7% reefer carriers, 7% power only, high shots, flatbeds, dry vans, and box trucks. So the, I charge 7% as a for those. I got 10% as well, but I charge. So we just got the phone with Smooth. So Hakeem, so under Hakeem, all those doc and now these folders under him, these folders, these subfolders under his reefer folder are the brokers that we booked loads for in our time that we were dispatching and in, in working together. So these are all the brokers. You some of them you recognize, Coyote, TQL, maybe I think I did. No, I, did, I never did TQL with him. But these are the brokers that we dealt with. And then the, the little files under that, which is under his folder, are the documents that I was speaking about earlier. His dispatch agreement, 
his profile, dispatch agreement and profile, his MC authority, his W-9, his certificate of insurance. I just, I just abbreviated COI. And then I got some extra stuff here, his NOA form. Um, so that's there. Now, within each broker folder under a particular driver of a particular equipment type, in this case, reefer, under the brokers, I get all of the rate confirmations and carrier packets that I did, namely rate confirmations for all the loads. This one was back in 2018, two years ago. We ran a load with Coyote, this particular broker, that paid him a certain amount. So we'll open this up just so you can take a look at it. That's how I, that's how I start, started, first started filing my carriers based off of their equipment types and the brokers that, that we moved the loads for, for that carrier. So when you first start out, if you don't have a software to manage and organize your carriers, you can just do file folders on your desktop until you can get like QuickBooks or whatever um, CRM software that you can use to organize your, your company. I'm just giving you an overview of, you know, that. So here is a load that we did for Coyote. It had uh, – one pickup and one, two, two drops. It paid twelve fifty. Uh, it went. I guess it didn't go that far because that's a small amount. One pick, two drops. So it was picking up in Pennsylvania, and the last delivery was somewhere in Connecticut, maybe. Yeah, Connecticut. So Pennsylvania to Connecticut. So Danby, Connecticut, from Oxford, Pennsylvania. So if we look that up on the map just to give you an idea what the rate of was that for that load. Um, Oxford, Pennsylvania to Danbury, Connecticut. Two hundred and fourteen miles. So it paid twelve fifty. So if you take what it paid, this is how you figure out your cents per mile. 1250 to the truck divided by the loaded miles, 215, let's just round it up, 215. That load paid $5.81 a mile. So that's an idea of the kind of loads that I was booking for my carriers. So he didn't really go that far. He was in Pennsylvania and went up to, he made one stop and he picked up in Oxford and he made one stop in North Haven, Connecticut, and he ended up in Danbury, Connecticut. So he paid five dollars and eighty-one cents a mile. One pick, two drops. So is that not a good load for a reefer? Five dollars and eighty-one cents a mile load, short distance for that large for that amount. So you can maintain loads with with you can maintain loads for your carriers with those types of brokers and put them on dedicated lanes like that, then you will, you'll do yourself a, a, and your carrier a good service that way. So, so are you guys good? Can you hear me? Can you still hear me? I want to make sure you guys can still hear me. Type yes if you can. Okay, okay. All right. So any questions about managing the carriers, organizing your filing system uh, for them, starting out with just um, file folders. I just gave you an example of file folders. Um, so we were at, so now with the next module, we were at carrier acquisition. So let's say we got carriers. Now we can go to load boards and talk to brokers about loads. Or load, go to load boards and understand the load boards. Let's do Right there, you went. So I want to make sure I, I, I want to make sure I can interact with you guys. Can you? Are you able to unmute yourself? Oh, I'm going in and out. I don't know why that is. Cause my. Not sure why. Yeah, what you say, Charles? Yeah, you Charles, you were, you were in it. You were in it. I was saying I'm, the next phase is low board phase. I was just wanted to look at a low board. You were, you were out of Atlanta, Georgia, right? 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so just to give you guys an idea of how to navigate low boards, um, this particular low board, well, first of all, what is a low board? The purpose of a low board is for carriers to go on there to either post their trucks as being available for a load by brokers or to search for loads themselves to find. And then it's for the brokers to post their loads for the carriers to call them on or to search for trucks to try to find for their loads. So we've got two different perspectives to look at as to what is a low board or the purpose of a low board. Okay. So this is an example of a low board. It's called 123 Low Board. And when you first log into it, you minimize this, find loads, and we'll say Atlanta. I just wanted to show you how to navigate Atlanta, Georgia. I spelled that right. Yeah, Atlanta, Georgia. And we'll say going anywhere in just the U.S., not U.S. and Canada. And let's say for all three of the major equipment types, dry van, flatbed, and reefer, and we'll just hit search. So I got 2,102 loads, 2,102 dry van, flatbed, or reefer loads coming out of Atlanta within a 150 mile radius. That's how you read that. Now, some of these loads have dates posted, others do not. So if you wanted to see the, the ones that are posted from highest to lowest, you just click offer, and now you've got this. So. Here is one, Lynette, if you want to look at a specific load on this load board, you just click anywhere in it and it opens up specifically the load. So this load is paying $2.04 a mile. It's paying, it's paying $4,000 to the truck. It is a flatbed or a step deck load, 48,000 pounds. It's a truck load and it's going over to Utah from um, Alabama. That's just an example of how to read and navigate this just to look at it. So if I click anywhere in this area here, it'll close that back up, and we can go to the next. Here's a flatbed one. Let's open this one up. Uh, the similar Alabama, which is, I think they got a lot of distribution centers over there. This load is, uh, this is a wide load. So if you got a truck, if you got a flatbed that does wide loads, they're going to need permits and flags and stuff. That load pays three dollars and thirty-one cents a mile. It's paying four thousand dollars. It's going twelve hundred and seven miles. Okay. So Z just asked a question here. Let me see. How do you find or get shippers to try to get dedicated lanes for your carriers? Well, first off, yeah. So you would have to do a search the same way you searched in like quick. Transport Solutions or um, that directory for the carriers, you would search for shippers, manufacturers, and then you would call them to see if they deal directly with carriers or they, do they deal with brokers. If they deal with carriers, now you say, okay, well, I'm a, I'm a managing, I manage a trucking company. We have 10 trucks. How can we get set up to run lanes for you? And what lanes do you have available um, for your company? So, so you just change the verbiage around a little bit when you talk to shippers. Because shippers don't want to hear the word dispatcher. They'd rather hear someone who manages trucks for a trucking company because then you, you, they hear that. They say, okay, he must have at least 5, 10, 15 trucks. So that means that I can get my lanes covered as a shipper by this trucking company. I'm more willing to uh, give them an opportunity. So, again, it's like Smooth said earlier, it's how you manipulate when you're talking to um, either a broker or a shipper. It's how you change the verbiage and the wording around. So, and then as also, too, um, you can do search for shippers in your area. So, who asked that question? Z? So you can do search for shippers in your yeah you can do search for shippers in your area too you can do manufacturers uh, distributors and wholesalers so let's say um, let's say manufacturers because those are shipping companies manufacturers in Atlanta 
So it'll give you a host of manufacturers in your Atlanta area. Look, so you got in your area right there, we got all these manufacturers in your area. So now you just look them up and go to their website, look them up, what they do, what they haul. So when you call, you always, when you want to call directly, direct to shippers to represent your carriers, you always want to do research on the shipper prior to calling them because you want to sound more professional. So when you start that conversation, you already know what they haul, um, their commodity, and things like that. So when you talk to them, you say, yeah, um, I see you guys haul this, or you haul lumber, or you haul steel beams, or you haul rebar. Um, what are the things that you need um, assistance in? I got a, I'm a manager of a trucking company. I'm, I, you know, I manage trucks for this trucking company, and uh, I'm trying to see if I can get set up with you guys. And they're going to say, send us your, um, send us your information. Well, okay, who do I send it to? What they're, what they're asking when they say send us your information, they're asking for uh, your MC, uh, MC authority your certificate of insurance, your W-9, and also you want to send them um, a NOA credit application to the shipper because they got to fill that out to get set up with the factory company of your carrier. So because not only do the factory companies run credits on brokers, they also run them on shippers as well because a lot of shippers, they pay net 30, net 45, net 60. What that means is in 30 days, and 45 days, or in 60 days, you'll receive a paper check. But if your trucking company or if your own operator carrier has a factory company, then they're going to get paid like next day. And then they'll worry about getting the money from the shipper. That's how that works. Okay. But yeah, you just Google, you could always Google for, for local companies. And then you also want to get familiar, since you're a dispatcher, this may be a little bit more on the broker side, but as a dispatcher, it still applies. If you get familiar with what's called supply chain logistics, the hierarchy of that, you know, you got, um, let's open up a Word document here. Do you understand the concept of supply chain logistics, right? Uh, what that means is there are shippers in every category of this hierarchy, supply chain logistics. So the first one, of course, are the raw materials, the raw material shippers, right? Well, then after them, you, got, you get raw materials. So then what happens next? You have people who have to make that stuff from the raw materials. So those are the manufacturers, right? The manufacturer shippers, right? Then you have people, after you make them, you have to distribute them. So you got the distributors. So I can spell it right, distributor, shippers. Then you distribute them to who? Either wholesalers, wholesale shippers, or what? Retailers. Retail shippers. So this is the supply chain logistics hierarchy. This is more on the broker side, but you can look, if you are looking as a dispatcher for potential shippers to call for your, um, for your um, carriers, then having a little bit of understanding. And then finally, you got the end users or the customers, you know, end users. So then you would say, okay, what are some examples of raw material shipper? You would have to research that. What's examples of raw material? What, what's examples of manufacturer shippers, distributors? Like like Sam's Club, Walmart, those are like distributors. And you got wholesalers like uh, Whole Foods, uh, little, you know, large chain like that. Retailers like Walmart, Sam's Club. So you, you just get an understanding of the companies that fall into that category. So you can go in your kitchen and then take any product out of your cabinet, turn it around and look at who's the manufacturer, who's the distributor of that, you know, research that company, give them a call wherever they are in your area, and then see if they either work with directly with brokers or do they work with brokers and carriers, you know. Now, from a broker side, most brokers and broker agents, this is how, this is what they do to try to get customers. They'll, they'll first of all, get an understanding of supply chain logistics, and then they'll They'll target a specific niche, whether it's raw materials, 
manufacturers, which one is more prevalent in the area by which they are have their broker authority in. Like let's say for example, Atlanta, Georgia. Is is Atlanta, Georgia saturated with manufacturers? Are they saturated with wholesalers, distributors? Well we don't know unless we do the research. So after you do the research, make that determination and then you'll say, okay, well let me target um, the the area in the supply chain logistics that's saturated in my local um, area where I live. So and then you just look at it like that. So the same thing applies with dispatching. You want to target, but let's say you're in Atlanta. Well, does Atlanta have more dry vans, flat beds, reefer carriers? So that's another thing. Let's go to Google again. So um, you can say uh, uh, owner operators or trucking companies near Atlanta, owner operators near Atlanta, or something to that effect, right? To kind of look. So that could be another resource for a dispatcher to, um, to go after, right? So these are the large own operator companies that you can look up. And you can also say carriers, because owner operators could apply for trucking companies. And you can do the search. So 78 more. Different let's go back here a little bit one second, go up and say truck drivers. And then trucking companies. So you look for different different ones. So there we go. Trucking companies, truck drivers, and you just click on that and open up this map and get a better feel for that. So and then you can look them up and see what type of trucks they have, how many they have, and decide if you want to dispatch for them. So there's several ways to go about it. Uh, we just got a few ourselves. But there's several ways and there's several angles that you can approach it under. So, but back to the low board navigation, you look up loads on the low board. Now let's drill down with this. Let's just say we're in Atlanta. Let's just say dry bands. So that number 2,102 is going to change. It's going to get smaller, 520, right? And we're going to click offer and bring the loads up again. So now loads coming out of Atlanta for a drive in going over to Nevada tomorrow. Chop tank, that's not paying a lot and it's going a long way. It's only a dollar sixty. So smooth was right. The broker's taking a lot of the money. But you can find something like this one here, Chattanooga, Tennessee, which is 104 miles northwest of Atlanta, going up to Jersey, only eight hundred and two miles and it's paying twenty one hundred. So that's over that's two thousand and seventy four cent a mile. So that's not bad. As a matter of fact, that's good actually. So there you have it there. Any questions about low boards and, and navigating the low boards? Hello, uh, is it Levy Bellamy? Someone just came in? Everybody good on the low board side? How are you? Um, I assume you're a guest. <laughs> so, so everybody, everybody's good on the low board side, right? So now, let's say, for example, after you navigate the low board, you understand it, that you actually want to book this load. What do you do? So in this case, you have the information to contact, uh, I guess, FATM1, Shop Tank, Transport, please contact them at extension that. So you have a contact number, 800-568-2240, right here, and the extension 521 for Jim Shin. So you will call Jim and say, uh, let me see what someone just commented on the chat. Okay, um, welcome. 
So you would say, hey, Jim, um, this is Charles over here at uh, Exodus Dispatching Services. Um, or you would say, hey, this is Charles at whatever your ABC truck is, whoever your carrier's company is, ABC truck. I'm looking at this load going from Baton Rouge to Tennessee for the 5th, which is Wednesday next week, going to uh, Hillside, New Jersey. Is that load still available? I recommend verbing it or, or saying it like that because sometimes loads may be gone, but the broker has yet to take them off the load board, so they're still showing up on the load board. So if you word it that way, hey, hey, Mr. Uh, hey, Jim Shannon, or hey, Jim, I'm looking at this Chattanooga, Tennessee uh, drive-in load going to Hillside, New Jersey. Is it still available on the 5th? And you'll say, oh, yeah, let me see. And they'll check their system. Oh, yeah, that load's already covered. Okay, well, it's on the low board still. Can you guys take that down because people are going to see that? And you say, yeah, I'm sorry. We'll, we'll take it down now. Or they'll say, uh, let me check. And they'll check and see the load. Yeah, it's still available. Uh, what's your MC number? When they ask that, they're asking for the MC authority of the carrier with whom you're looking for that load for. So whatever that carrier's MC number is, of course, you already have that carrier under a dispatcher agreement. So you go ahead and give that MC number to the broker. So the broker's going to look it up in the system, and they're going to tell you one of two things. Either your carrier's already set up with them, in this case, Chop Tank, or they are not. So if they are not set up, let's do the worst case scenario first. If they are not set up with the carrier, uh, with the brokerage, they're going to say, um, who do I send the setup packet to or the carrier packet to or the broker carrier agreement? All three of those things mean the same thing. Set up packet, carrier packet, broker carrier agreement. They're all the same thing. If we go to forms and documents again, we look at carrier packet. It's it's a broker carrier agreement or it's called set up packet or it's called on onboarding packet, whatever it's called, it all it all means the same thing. Okay. So the um so what you would do is okay yeah send it so he's gonna say who do I who do I send the um carrier packet to this is the broker asking you on the phone you'll say of course at the dispatcher you want that broker to send that packet to you because you're going to be doing you're filling it out on your carriers for your carriers on his behalf his or her behalf now when you fill it out you're not signing your dispatch company information under where it says carrier you're actually putting the carriers information under where it says carriers. And you're actually signing when you go through the, the, the onboard and set a packet, you're actually signing. The broker is going to send it already with his information already pre-filled out over here. You're putting all the carrier's details here. You're not putting dispatcher information here because, again, it's a broker-carrier agreement. It's not a broker-dispatcher agreement. It's a broker-carrier agreement in this case. You're trying to get your carrier set up with this broker to in order to book this load and move this load as well as other loads moving forward. So the thing to remember with brokers also too is once you do a carrier broker agreement or a setup packet or a carrier packet for your carrier with a specific broker once, you don't have to do it again. You only need to do that one time. Now you, every now and then you may need to update some stuff like maybe your carrier's Certificate of insurance policy is about to expire, and they need to um, send a new updated policy to the broker so they can have it on file or other things. You may, you may have to update certain things, but you only need to do a broker carrier agreement one time. So that's that. You, they send you the broker um, carrier agreement, the setup packet, the broker packet, or whatever. You fill that out. You send that back along with those other documents that you got from your carrier when you first got that carrier under a dispatcher agreement. Remember those documents, the NC authority, the W-9, and the certificate of insurance. And then a fourth document if your carrier has a factory company, which is the NOA form. So the reason why the broker asks for these documents, they get the broker-carrier agreement back. They process that into their system along with the NC authority because they need to see if your carrier is authorized to move freight. The W-9 to see they have an EIN number for tax purposes and a certificate of insurance to see if they meet the requirements for insurance for their brokerage. So if all those things check out, the broker's going to call you back and say, yeah, your carrier's all set up with us. 
now we're going to send you a rate confirmation for this specific load that you called us about. So the rate confirmation states what the load is, what the load is, the load number, the DOL number, the reference, the number of pallets, whatever, where the load is picking up from, which is the shipper's address, and where it's delivering to, which is the receiver's address. So another name for a receiver is consignee. Another name for a shipper is consignor. It's the same spelling except for instead of two E's on the end, it's O-R, consignor, and consignee. So consignee is the receiver or where it's being delivered to. Consignor is the shipper or where it's being picked up from. So keep that in mind. And then the rate confirmation will list other special instructions, what is paying, and then you will sign on behalf of your carrier and send that back to the broker. Once that happens, the load is officially booked, and you can worry about now finding another load for your carrier once this load delivers. Because this is a 802-mile load, so that's going to take about a day and a half maybe to deliver. Picks up on the 5th, which is a Wednesday. It may deliver Friday. So you could be working on a backhaul load out of New Jersey or within a certain uh, deadhead miles coming out of there going either back. The good thing about 123 Load Board is you have a backhaul's tab. You could be looking for loads while this load is being ran. You could be looking for their next load. So once they get empty in Jersey, Hillside, New Jersey, you you should, you know, within a day and a half, you should have something for them coming out of there. Even talking to this broker, say, hey, man, you got something coming out of there? My guy's coming, delivering that. You got something coming out of there? We just booked a load for you guys. And they may. They may have something going back, right back to Chattanooga. And if that's the case, then you can potentially set up a dedicated lane with this brokerage for that Chattanooga hillside run back and forth. And that's the concept of building relationships as a dispatcher with the broker for your carrier in that sense. You guys are with me? Any questions? Type yes if you still can hear me. I want to make sure I'm not going in and out. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, you're good. Okay. So Danielle is, is new. She logged in, and Livey is new. She logged in. So um, Q and A right now. I'm going to open up for Q and A because I got about uh, 15 more minutes. So we'll we'll close it here and we'll do Q and A. What specific questions or any general questions you guys may have, if any? Oh, and before I do that, too, the last thing, too, after you book a load and you book the load because you, you navigated the load board, you found the load in Module 2, Module 3 is you booked the load, which just went through that process of talking to the broker, rate confirmation, set up packet, um, and then invoicing the carrier. After the carrier is paid, you invoice them for the percentage or flat rate that you charge for your, for your service. You can even do that through... Uh, QuickBooks, either through PayPal, uh, Square, whatever um, payment platform that you use. Um, Livy asked, she said, I was not able to attend the training yesterday. Will there be another? The, the training yesterday was more of a seminar for non-members of the Dispatcher 101 ongoing training platform for beginners. My next seminar is going to be on the 15th, the dispatcher seminar. The next broker seminar is going to be on the 16th, so Saturday or Sunday. You can sign up for those because that will help you decide if you want to um, become a member of this ongoing training platform um, also. And, and, okay, so Z said, do you recommend learning dispatch first and then into brokering and or starting a trucking business? Or you can start a trucking business, dispatch your trucks, and then transition into brokering. So you can do it that way too, uh, Z. 
Danielle said, can a dispatcher, can you be a dispatcher broker at the same time? You can, but you, they have to be separate businesses, separate business entities. And like when you set up your LLC and stuff like that, they have to be separate. Or here's another option. You can start a brokerage, get your broker authority set up, start what's called an asset-based brokerage. What that means is, is you have trucks and trailers. You have trucks under your brokerage, and you are dispatching those trucks that are under your brokerage. So you're booking loads for the trucks that are under your through your brokerage. So that would be a way to kind of combine them. But if you want a separate dispatching and a separate brokering side, because I, I worked for a company that had a broker side and a trucking side, and they, they were separate. Yes, you do need MCs. You need an MC to be, uh, you don't need an MC to be a dispatcher, uh, but you need an MC to be a trucking company or a um, brokerage. Okay. Good. Uh, that was a great question, by the way. Um, the, the the MC one. MC or DOT, depending on if you're operating uh, intrastate or interstate. That's also. So. But yeah, I've seen and then. There's been um, great areas about dispatching too. So there's three ways that I look at the dispatching. Um, you can have a trucking company, get an MC for your trucking company and dispatch your own trucks. That's you can dispatch like that. You can work for a trucking company as manage the trucks for those trucking companies. It's not your MC, but you're working up under an MC, a trucking company under their MC, and you're the you're the dispatcher for the trucking company that you don't own. And then the third way is an independent freight dispatcher, where you get dispatcher, where you get carriers under a dispatcher agreement, and then you you are dispatched for them. So, uh, yes, that is what I am heading towards, starting my trucking business with a box truck. Uh, I want to dispatch my own truck, of course. Well, I need to start another business to dispatch. If you are starting a if you are starting a trucking company, a box truck company, you can dispatch your own box truck. You don't have to have another business to dispatch your own box truck for your truck because you are dispatching under your own trucking company. So no. You can dispatch your own yeah. Okay, so you, you just answered my question. Yeah. So if you're starting a trucking company, you can dispatch your trucks for your trucking company under your MC for the trucking company. So you can do that. That's option number one as it relates to dispatching specifically. You can start a small trucking company, dispatch your trucks. Now I'm going to give you two perspectives on that too. You can start a trucking, you can get an MC authority and a trucking company. You can have access for your trucking company or you can lease your MC authority to other trucks who don't have it and still dispatch for those trucks who are leased up under your authority for your trucking company. That's number one. Number two, you can work for a trucking company who has their own authority and trucks, and you can dispatch for them. And then number three, you could be an independent freight dispatcher with your own dispatching business, dispatching for trucks with a dispatcher agreement and profile, which is what we are talking about today. But there are other options because you're going to come across situations of people who say, well, Dispatching is kind of illegal. You're like acting like a broker and things like that. Well, here's the workaround for that. You say, okay, well, since you are, since you don't want um, me to be an independent freight dispatcher, I can simply just get an MC authority, uh, start a trucking company, get an MC authority, and then lease my authority to the owner operators out there and dispatch for them like that. It's my authority. It's my company. So. There are ways around it. They try to throw Title 49 of CFR at you, saying that you, you can't be a bona fide agent for more than one truck because a bona fide agent represents working for that company um, on a daily basis. Well, if you're dispatching for trucks, whether they're your trucks or, or um, 
owner operators, you're dispatching for them on a daily basis. Now, whether you are working from home or not is irrelevant. You are dispatching for them. You're finding loads for them on a daily basis. So there's a gray area in Title 49 of CFR 371.2. Let me type that in there. So, okay. Anything else, guys? And for those of you who joined as guests, um, uh, the one who is the box truck person, where are you based out of? Uh, is it Libby, Livy, Bellamy? Where are you based out of? Starting the box. So you're in Columbus, Georgia. So are you familiar with uh, Sheldon and Tammy? Okay. So, yeah, have you gone through their uh, training as far as box truck? You're in, the, you're in both of those groups? I'm in their groups, too. Yeah, but you're, the area you're in in Georgia is, is box truck, LTL, freight heavy. So, yeah, you can get a, uh, get a box truck over there. And then um, are you running the box truck yourself or are you putting someone in the box truck? Okay, your husband. So you're going to be a husband and wife team. You do the admin stuff at home, dispatch, stuff like that. So are you familiar with the load boards that cater specifically to box trucks, namely My Virtual Fleet and Selectors? So let me type that in here for you. My Virtual Fleet is one load board for LTL, and Selectus is the major one. It takes a lot of criteria to get into Selectus. Selectus by... Selectus was bought out by a company called Omni Tracks, but Selectus is a low board, and my virtual fleet is also a low board. You can also use other low boards. You just got to drill down and search specifically for like 26 foot, less than 10,000 pounds. So, uh, Z said, What is the group y'all talking about for the boss trucks? Um, so, let's go to Facebook. Uh, So the two groups that Sheldon and Tammy have are called um, Start Your Own Trucking Company. You can look that up, Tam, Tammy, Tammy Moore and Sheldon Moore. And the other one is, that one's called Start Your Own Trucking Company. The other one's called Start a Box Truck Company, We Will Train You. Those are the two groups. And they have seminars about that. They'll, they have resources that they deal with um, as far as uh, loan officers for the box truck, connections for loads, uh, insurance, things like that. Everything box truck related, uh, Tammy and Sheldon are a resource. And then I got another one, uh, Box Truck University. If you look up Box Truck University, that's also another one that deals with um, box truck. Um, I'm not sure if they are interconnected with Tammy and Sheldon, but that's another one too. So it all deals with LTL freight. Um, LTL is less than truck load. So there you go. So it's all about resources. And you're in Georgia, so you're in a freight heavy, um, freight heavy state. So you you probably need to uh, connect with them or. So I am, said, I am in their group to learn about box trucks. I am in this group to learn about this. I suppose I'm very, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, if you are considering uh, either taking the seminar and then considering rolling over to the ongoing training, you'll, you'll get access to my low boards um, in the back office if you were to enroll. Because I got two different, I got a seminar Here's the, here's the difference, and I'm glad, I, I'm glad this is on the recording. Here's the difference, because most people get confused with this. So the seminar is like a two- to three-hour, one-day training for $99. But you learn how to get carriers, navigate the boards, talk to brokers, complete the packets, book loads, load plan, which is like finding your next load and keeping your carrier running, invoicing your carrier. I give you three e-books, free e-books, 
Uh, one glossary, other training materials that you're going to need when we go in the seminar. If after the seminar you decide, okay, that wasn't enough, I want the ongoing training where I have access to the low boards and I have access to two days a week of live trainings also, then you say, Charles, I want to join, I want to enroll in this batch of one-on-one -on -one training after taking the seminar. And that $99 will be rolled into the $299 single member. So instead of paying $299, it will be $199 because you already paid the $99 for the seminar and you decided to continue and you wanted to enroll into the training, the ongoing training. This is ongoing for as long as you want to be. It's not a one week, one month. This is for as long as you want to enroll, as long as you maintain. One month, let's say you join this one. One month after joining, it, it is a subscription-based membership, so it's $19.99 a month to maintain subscription one month after you, the initial enrollment. And that's because, you know, you have access to all the lower boards. We are always adding to and taking away. It's, it's, it's a kind of a way of showing skin in the game. And $19.99 a month is, is not, I can't say that it's, that's expensive, but that's, that's the process there. So the seminars first. If, if a person who's in seminars for non-members, those who want to just get information about dispatching enough, I give you a lot of content. So if after that, you decide, say, hey, yeah, I need, I need more of this, and I want to keep going because I'm, I'm new to this. I know very little, if anything. So that's what that's for. You say, Charles, I, I want to get the other training. I want to roll this into the other training. That's what that's for. And you'll let me know via email, and then we'll go from there. So that's how that works. So I'm glad it's on the recording because it'll be on YouTube and it'll give a better explanation. Because I, I have a lot of people who join the Dispatcher 101 Facebook group, and that's cool, but they're missing out on the seminar and the um, the ongoing membership. See, the Facebook group just, I mean, there's content here a little bit, but you're missing out. So. So that's that's that. Um, any more questions? All right. Well, as far as the dispatcher one on one training for beginners, next live training will be Wednesday night, six p.m. for um enrolled members and those who want to attend as guests as well. Now those who attend as guests, you will see the screen. I share my screen, but you won't have access to the stuff in the back office, but you'll at least see it. So and then this will be on YouTube. So I you know I highly recommend to um, subscribe to the YouTube channel as well, Dispatch 101 for Exodus and to see content there. Because I'm going to upload this video on YouTube too. So All right, guys. So until then, next uh, Wednesday night, 6, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time will be the next training. Um, as always, I put my – so if anyone who's a guest have questions, I think Danielle has already called me, but uh, Livy or Levy, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing the name correctly. If you wanted to call, there's the phone number and then the email. Le oh, okay, LeVay, LeVay. I know she's like, she like, get it right, boy. <laughs> so there it is. There's the email and the phone number if you want to reach me. I always put my information there. So next Wednesday is the, the next live for this. Yes, I'm putting, yes, I will send out a reminder for the 15th. I got you in a, um, a Word document, um, a text document as the first person who signed up for the 15th seminar. So yes, you will get a reminder. And thanks for joining the seminar. Hopefully you will enroll into the um, ongoing training as well. All right, guys, I will see you. The next live will be Wednesday evening, 6 p.m. Eastern time. So then enjoy your weekend.